Hey guys, it's just me bringing you another video of uh, my Hunter's Lodge FR8, the Spanish FR8. Pretty good looking gun. Uh, this one ran $88. It has the... Uh, Century marking there, made in Spain. Uh, this one would be uh, 308. Uh, this is the uh, rifle that they took, and I can't tell you the uh, receiver they used. Uh, they dated it. I think that's 55, but they used the Set Me semi-auto rifle uh, barrel. If you have owned a Set Me or have seen one, you will see that same setup that I'm showing you. But then from behind the cleaning tube kit, which this removes, on it's... Looks just like a regular Mauser. The FR8 has the wrist style stock, which I think you can make this from a 40 Model 43 stock. The FR7, don't hold me to it, but I am pretty sure that the receiver was a small ring or somewhat different and the wrist is straight so I'm not a hundred percent but I think the FR7 used the 1916 features the FR8 uses the 43 and I have an issue with this one with the bolt when I have to keep the safety straight up, if I let down on the safety, the firing pin will go off if it is cocked. And also, I don't, I think this is where if I hold in on the trigger and let down on that, the firing pin still will go. I'm. I can't remember how I, it goes, but anyway, I. I know if that goes in, and uh, I can't get the bolt out, I had to take some vice grips and actually pull this back, in order for the bolt to come up and cycle. So, I have a. Uh, Guess what you'd say, a little bit of an issue there with that. But, and you can see how good and grimy and dirty this one is. Um, so, this one will be fun. There you go, uh, caliber 7.62. Which I think is the designation for this gun, 7.62 NATO, which uh, a lot of people call 308. But uh, 7.62 by 51 versus 308. Um, so I wanted to show you the condition of this before I get her cleaned up. I'm thinking it'll be a nice clean up and... Uh, this is one of my favorites that I've bought here lately. It uh, It's just different. There's not any other bolt action Mauser type out there that quite looks like this with that bolt uh, barrel the way it is. So uh, we'll show you the breakdown and clean up. Okay guys, here's the breakdown. This one is in great shape for what it is um 
you see a lot of the grimy stuff, but I don't think there is any pity on this gun. Uh, if there is, there may be some light stuff, but uh, it looks very promising. And uh, I just love the parkerizing of this gun. But we have uh, very few areas of rust. Uh, nice, very nice handguard. Um, uh, I've heard you can make these out of, I think, 1903 Springfield handguards, but I was very happy to get the handguard on it. Anytime you get a rifle that is suspect of missing parts, a handguard can be, uh, one of the parts that probably will be missing, but if you get one, consider yourself lucky. Um... It's, it is a gamble. You just don't know what you're going to be missing when you order something. Uh, I don't see any bad areas. Uh, they, I believe they all will clean up. Um... The, the stock I'm very pleased with, and I'm thinking this thing's going to be pretty when it gets cleaned. Uh, look at all the grain in that. I don't know what kind of wood that is, but I'm hoping that darkness will lighten up and we'll see some good looking wood. Either that's a odd spot of grain or a repair, but the repair looks like wood. Just maybe where the grain's crapping out there. Um, I don't understand the, uh, Spanish 43 has the same setup. I like to attach my slings on these Spanish guns to the one in the stock. However, you've got one that's underneath also. But the top, you only have the side loop. On the 43, you have an uh, underneath loop and a side loop. There is the uh, wood repair that I surprisingly, you know, surprised myself in doing I still need to fine tune it um, but the inside couldn't have worked out better uh, like I said I took a VZ 24 Mauser and chopped that part out and glued her in and it, it's holding nicely and it's strong. And it also was included in the area of the bolt, the recoil lug. So that helps hold it on if nothing else does. <clears throat> so, like I said, it uh, looks like a fun cleanup ahead. Um, let's go over the disassembly. <clears throat> Of course, I took the bottom screws out, dropped the magwell and trigger guard, and I knew that there was a screw up in here, so, but I had forgot that, how to get this tube out. So, if you get one and if you're taking it apart, the... 
first you have a uh, detent button that will depress and you will unscrew that from here you will then that is up inside there you will proceed to unscrew the tube up and it will come up and out of there this this screw screws into the stock and this gets in the way so have you a good flat screwdriver with a long shaft to get that screw out once this screw is out you will pop the uh, the stop the stop this will come out of here and this popped off the barrel I could not do not try to take off an F R eight handguard without going through these steps and loosening this this would not come off until i loosened the this screw out of this and the stock got the stock off and this then popped off i'm not saying that it won't come off without taking this apart but for me on mine here it was not coming off and i'm glad that i left it alone and done what i done to save from breaking it because i've said in other videos i think i do not like spending a lot of money on a little small thin piece of wood but you know for your bolt action to look right you want that handguard with it and that is just important to me to have it be complete. So, I think this one will clean up nicely. I hope that I have helped you out by explaining the process I went through to take this apart. To where that the stock would come off and this handguard would pop off easier. I noticed I haven't taken the flash hider off, but it was loose. So, it's the standard uh, right tight, left loose setup. And I really like how this makes the gun look. That's a cool looking item right there. So let's get to cleaning. Uh, I am looking forward to cleaning on the stock. Uh, I mean the metal looks like it's going to rub off and uh, oil up and shine and uh, look good once I uh, may have to soak that end in something. But uh, I'm anxious to get to that stock because I, I, I'm seeing some nice grain and uh, stuff in there. I hope that my repair matches somewhat as far as color to the rest of the wood. Um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see on that. But until the next clip, um, I'll show you the cleaned up, finished, and assembled rifle. Okay guys, I'm back after cleaning, which was a fun time. Uh, I'm excited about getting that stock cleaned up, but the metal is, I really like what I'm seeing. Uh, 
only had some minor areas of a little bit of pitting around the receiver there in the front you can see that the date on this gun is 1955 um, I just need to get it wiped down a little better but uh it turned out nice I, I like the parkerizing on these um, it's just uh, it's different that's for sure but uh while I'm at it I think if you want an FR8 uh, that you need to check it out uh, I got this one from Hunter's Lodge um, you're not going to find one out there for $88 uh, you know and this one it it has a problem with the bolt and that was it um, I've the the trigger catch is the way uh, sear and the uh, back piece are crisp and I don't know what's going on but when you flip down the safety it wants to go off and uh, you can pull this back with uh, uh, pliers and get it to catch but it's just not doing what it should. So what advice do you have me, anyone, for fixing that? Uh, I'd like to have that be a, a safe thing. I, I won't be shooting it until I can get that fixed. But uh, tell me what you think about it. Um, but overall, it's uh, cleaned up good. I prefer a little gasoline. <clears throat> you see the dirt and the grime that come off of these parts. You soak them a few minutes to a few hours. Uh, I've soaked some stuff, bad stuff, overnight. <clears throat> but uh, it cleans it up fairly nice. So, uh, I think we have a pretty good one here. Uh, for the money so I'll now go to uh, I'll get to that stock cleaning at some point here and I'll be sharing it and then we'll have the assembled rifle later Hey guys, I'm back. Just showing you the cleaned up, shined up, spit shined version here. The end result of the FR8. I think it turned out pretty good. No major areas of pitting except a minor area around the top edge where the wood covers it I polished that out and oiled it up um, love this grain right here this is a nice stock um, I don't know if that is a uh, I think it's a knot there's a three small knots in there I don't know what kind of wood that is either um, I pretty much scrubbed this stock down with uh, 
Dawn dish detergent and a little bit of bleach mixed in with some hot water. Uh, scrubbed it with a toothbrush. Uh, then washed it off. Uh, blow dried it. Dried it up really well. Let it set a little while. Then I took the old uh, Vaseline treatment to it. And again, it is not as shiny as it appears this light on this camera makes it look a lot shinier than it is uh you should try you out a gun stock sometime if you have an extra one laying around try that uh vaseline method and see what you think about it uh, so here she is pretty shined up uh everything went back together really easy because when I took it apart, it was all gunked up and tight. Now, uh, I learned that does not uh, screw out. It simply has a uh, pin that goes in a hole right there. And then this unscrews after you push the detent, and that lets it come out. But uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, like I said, I've uh, wanted an FR8 for some time after I had a couple fixers that weren't really ever fixed, uh, and I sold them, and I've been wanting another one ever since, and that's been 25 years, so uh, finally got one back in the fold, uh, and... On camera, that looks worse than it is. I just need to, I guess, rub out those sharp edges there of that rusty looking oil. It's not rust, it's just uh, where I haven't got those crevices all cleaned out. But again, I'll say uh, I'm not advertising for any company, but. You know who I've said that I've got this from, and if you think you need one, or would like to have a cheaper way of getting one, that it is a cheaper way of getting one. Um, I have not invested one penny over the $88 in shipping for this gun. It had everything with it. Uh... I've put a little time in it, and I had the uh, VZ24 stock as a donor for the piece here. Um, so, this one, I think, of the seven or eight that I've shown you that I'm going to work on this winter, I think this one is the best one, the one that's turned out in my favor better than any other gun that I've bought uh, from Royal Tiger Center of Fire and Hunter's Lodge but uh, I guess I'm partial to it too because I just love an FR8 and uh, you know I've had them before and then I've not had it for a while and wanted one so uh, and I'll give another shout out to the the casual collector I think he uh bought a couple and I saw his video and it motivated me to want to buy one myself I think the ones he got wasn't as in good a shape as this one they may have had the stocks broke or I remember them needing some parts maybe the cleaning tube um but I guess I got really lucky on this one uh you know let's just I call it the pig in the poke or the grab bag. You you don't know what you're going to get, but you're happy when you get something that you're pleased with in the end. So, uh, that's my video on the FR8, the uh, aftermath here, the cleanup. And uh, I do have a stock or, uh, I mean, a sling. I'm back. Uh, here is the sling that came on on the FR8 
And you know, it, it really surprised me that it had a sling with it. But it's your typical used uh, surplus FR8 sling. They may have used these also on the set me. Uh, but really, it could be used on any rifle uh, that has this, you know, something up here, a sling swivel or a loop to where you can attach it with this. That's a little bit different, but... And uh, I noticed this is very stiff. Uh, you almost have to pry it open with a screwdriver and put it back together with a pair of pliers. It's a, I think it's the thickness of the sling or the uh, yeah the thickness of the material. Because uh, everyone I fooled with, it's like that. But I'm gonna clean this one up and scrub it with some oil and a toothbrush and. Uh, I've already put it in a bucket of, uh, you know, a container of warm water and dish detergent for two or three days and let that thing sit and stew and it, uh, I should have took a before and after. Uh, there's an area where the sling, the buckle may have covered it and it was all like that. It's rusty and dirty. You should have seen the dirt that was in the bottom of that container. But, um. The, I'll probably oil up that uh, leather a little better. It's, I don't think I'll be packing it around. So, you know, I'm not going to worry about it breaking. But So that's it. Uh, just wanted to grab that sling and put with it. Uh, I think it looks great. Uh, the wood repair is a little bit of a lightness there. What I had to sand and you know to form it to it, uh, rest the gun but uh, overall i'm very pleased so uh that's it for now you uh continue to enjoy your hobby and i'll continue to join mine